Tony Khan addresses the decision to air the CM Punk Jack Perry footage on Dynamite last week. Plus, AEW could be hiring a top free agent tag team. And we have an update on a new WWE signing. It's all in the Cultaholic Wrestling News right now. Still ramifications from last week's Dynamite where we saw the footage of CM Punk and Jack Perry's altercation backstage at Wembley at All In. On the whole, basically, Based on what I've seen over the last week and very negative reaction to airing that footage. Yeah. Not the done thing to do. There's been a whole variety of opinions, um, but I, I think you're right in saying that most of them seem to be falling on the side of, even if they're not necessarily fans of CM Punk, people seem, to, the majority seem to be agreeing that this didn't really help AEW in, in the slightest and was it probably a, a bad decision dragging them back into this mess when they seem to be kind of moving on from it. I'm a big fan of trying to go, well, maybe they could do this. Maybe they could find that, trying to eke out the good in that. But apparently uh, even I was wrong in thinking that. And obviously the better thing to have done is to have not played the footage. Still stand by that. Tony Khan, however, thinks very differently to that. He was speaking on the Chris Russell show and was asked about his decision to air the footage of what transpired between Jack Perry and CM Punk. Uh, and he said he, well, he was, he kind of defended it in a very storyline way, didn't he? Yeah, he said, well, I think it made a lot of sense. First of all, FTR and the Young Bucks ladder match is coming up at Dynasty for the World Tag Team Championships. This is the fourth chapter in FTR versus the Bucks. The last time they wrestled, Young Bucks versus FTR 3 was at Wembley Stadium, AW All In, and a lot happened that day. They were the third match on the pay-per-view, and at one point it looked like we were going to have to call them up and they were going to have to wrestle the first match because of the incident backstage. Um, and then they ended up going out on the spot they were in, but the Young Bucks said the whole day, everything that happened, it really affected their mental preparation. They weren't able to pray before the match. There he's echoing a line from the Young Bucks yeah, promo. Yeah, I don't think he said, I think that's very much in kayfabe, mm -hmm. I do believe. He said they were very I stressed hope. out. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe they're really good. Maybe, maybe I don't know. Well, in, in the <laughs> way that they said it, the way they, they said it last week was it. incredibly tongue-in-cheek. It was very heelish, So yeah. I would hope that they, it was, yeah, It sounds like that. he's kind of uh, towing the, the storyline line there, I suppose, towing mm -hmm. the storyline. Uh, but he goes on to say, um, it really affected their mental preparation. Uh, they were very stressed out. They slipped on the banana peel and they lost the match. But they blame FTR. They blame what happened at Wembley Stadium. And that's why in hindsight they refused to shake FTR's hand. So kind of what, what Tony Khan is doing there is is talking about airing the footage entirely in the context of the, the storyline that they tried to shoehorn it into on Dynamite or given all the reports that have come out since and everything um, it very much seems to suggest that that storyline, the books saying that it threw off their preparation that day and they're working it into this current feud with FTR Everybody seems to agree that that was that came after the decision to air it. Uh, mm. That was kind of a, a shoehorned in reason to air the footage on the show as per Tony Khan's reported wishes. Tony Khan here is kind of saying it in reverse. He's saying, well, it was a great idea to air it because it, it, it it's part of this feud. He's kind of saying that it happened in the other order. Like they had this storyline first and decided to air the footage therefore. But that runs contradictory to what everyone seems to have been reporting in the aftermath, which is that the decision to air the footage was made first and the storyline was came up with, was, was kind of invented after the fact. I think the idea is to think that the FTR Young Bucks feud would have lived or died whether or not they played the footage right. of CM Punk shoving Jack Perry is asinine. Yeah. It would have been a great match and they could have told a great story without having to dig that up, but they did anyway. So they're trying to at least make some sense of it. Uh, Tony Khan, delighted with the way that it led to Jack Perry getting quite the reaction at the New Japan show the following Friday. He said it was fascinating to see after that tape played the reaction that Jack Perry got at New Japan. He got the reaction of a superstar. That is not altogether unexpected and it's something very interesting, perhaps a side effect of this. He's already a big star in wrestling. Really the way the crowd connected with him in Chicago was interesting to see because he came out milking it mm -hmm. with like the Chicago, yeah, the uh, Chicago, flag. Chicago flag and Crimea River written on the back of his yeah. jacket. He did a chokehold in the match very deliberately, like what happened to him in the footage. And, and it yeah. plays into what you said there as well. And it's true where he went, oh, that was, what a surprise. Jack Perry got <laughs> over from <laughs> it. Was that not 
what if, if if you were again if you weren't airing that as a means to an end mm. and you're surprised that somebody got over from airing it clearly your reasons for airing it were wrong I, I think though that I, I kind of have, I, I think Jack Perry made the best of a potentially bad situation here because he played up to it he knew the reaction he was going to get from the Chicago crowd and he decided rather than ignore it he was going to kind of go full throttle and just play into it and I think in hindsight that might have been a very clever decision because mm. the crowd were booing him yes but at certain points they were kind of it was like they were playing along it wasn't the wrong sort of heat it seemed yeah. to be it seemed to I, I think Jack Perry deserves a lot of credit for the way he's handled that because I don't think that was Tony Khan's decision to say to Jack go out there and really milk it I, I don't think know Jack but would I, assume, have, yeah. I would assume that Jack made that call of his own mm. of his own accord uh, yeah and whether or not he didn't he made the most of it out there in the arena as well exactly mm. however he did because again like I thought well if you're playing that and it shows obviously Jack Perry getting uh, getting shoved to the ground by CM Punk after Punk approaches him uh, uh, it was like, well, surely this is a design to bring Jack Perry back into the fold. But Tony Khan's words there made me feel like he was surprised by that. And I thought this would have led to Jack Perry joining the Young Bucks well, and forming part of this thing, maybe. I think that, that this is just my own theory, but I think we may see Jack Perry screw FTR at Dynasty at the weekend. I think that, yeah, that has to make sense in that way. Mm. And it's how you're going to bring back Jack Perry. That's probably how it, you do it. It would instantly propel him up the card in terms of the heel standings as well. He would instantly mm. be one of the most kind of reviled men in AEW. And I think he can certainly work this to his favor. Not saying that kind of AEW and Tony Khan have instantly recovered from what was generally considered to be a misstep last week. But I think Jack Perry has done very well. Well, I think he has. He's, he's made the best of it. Mm. Anyway, uh, from shoot work to work shoots, shooting, working, shooting, <laughs> machine guns. There's your connection. Let's talk about the Motor City machine guns. What's the hand gesture? Because I got this wrong last time. Oh, so that's the... Because that... I, I, did it, I did it before and I think I got... I, 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 I think it was Bristol I did. I don't know what I uh, I learned this from uh, two friends of the channel, Austin and Sydney, who are from Michigan. Ah! Yeah. Oh, and they say that... to the Summer Witches. When you Yes, but they say that when you are uh, a kid growing up in Michigan, the way you're taught at school to show where you're from in the state is that the state of Michigan is generally sort of shaped like a hand. Right. Uh, if you hold it like that a little Call bit. Hold my hand. And uh, then you point to the part where, where you're from. And I'm oh. not exactly sure where Detroit is, but wherever the Motor City machine guns point to in their entrance, that's Detroit. I'm just going to say the, around the Michigan yeah. area. Under the sea. <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, I'm off. Oh, in Canada. <laughs> yeah. um, but anyway, speaking of two people from Michigan mm. who know the hand gesture, Alex Shelley, Chris Saban, mm. Cassie Haynes of Bodyslam.net reporting that the Motor City City machine guns are headed to AEW. Sources have told uh, Body Slam and Cassidy Haynes that AEW and the guns are working on finalizing a deal. It's not going to be finalized for a bit. However, the decision has been made and the deal will be worked out. Interesting. Yes. So they've not signed yet, but they seem to have agreed to join and now they're just kind of ironing out the details, I suppose. They're a good fit for AEW. Oh, yeah. I they think so. They are a good fit. They are, uh, um, I mean, they're kind of regarded as uh, a legendary 21st century tag team by this mm -hmm. point. They're work in the ring and how cool they are. I think they're really cool guys. Um, I'm just a shameless fan of the machine guns. And um, I think, yeah, they fit really well in with that tag division. Should the Bucks indeed win those belts, uh, I would have maybe the machine guns embark on a huge feud with them whenever they do actually sign because I think those two teams are kind of made for each other uh, or FTR they, uh, they they match up so well with so many tag teams it depends who wins those vacated tag titles we'll find out at Dynasty this weekend we've got nine pitches for Dynasty coming up later today as well as predictions for Dynasty and live reactions across the weekend as well and you can get what happened at AEW Dynasty afterwards as well stay with Cultaholic we'll give you all of that uh, another vacated title is the women's world title in WWE Rhea Ripley uh, leaving that belt in the ring Owen to an arm injury. PW Insider have given us a bit more detail on how that injury occurred. Yes, uh, they have said the injury occurred when Ripley was sent into a wall by Liv Morgan uh, during this backstage attack by Liv Morgan last week on Raw, injuring the AC joint where her collarbone and right shoulder are connected. We are told that her recovery time has not been confirmed internally and it will be dependent on whether she requires surgery as well as physical therapy. For those who have asked, the chair shot during the brawl had no bearing on the injury and was not the cause. It was simply a freak injury. Very, very 
very unfortunate there for Rhea Ripley, especially after such uh, a very impressive title reign. Yeah, we wish uh, Mother a full and speedy recovery. Uh, all the best to yeah, you. Oh. Uh, another one that needs a full and speedy recovery uh, is Matt Cardona. Sean Ross Sapp on Twitter reporting that several promoters have noted that Cardona has informed them he suffered a torn peck and he's going to require surgery. So he's set for a big, long layup. And since his release from WWE, Matt Cardona has absolutely redefined what it is to be an independent wrestler. He has absolutely milked every opportunity and to the point where, I think it was last week or the week before, he was on... TNA Impact and AEW Collision in the same week. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. Uh, as well as doing numerous indie dates as well. He, he's been doing some incredible work with Steph DeLander, uh, who will absolutely keep that torch uh, fl uh, alight whilst Matt Cardona is away. Gutted that he's down, yep. but certainly not out. I feel like he's the sort of person who, even if he does have a, a quite long injury layoff, and obviously we would hope he's back as soon as possible, but it feels like he's the sort of person who will find some sort of way to keep himself in the conversation and keep himself relevant, whether it's appearing at show in a non-wrestling capacity, whether it's going back to vlogging his old his mm. old stomping ground. Uh, we'll have to see. But yeah, best wishes to both Rhea Ripley and Matt Cardona. Take care and spike your hair. Uh, we'll mm. end on some news regarding a new WWE signing on the horizon in the form of Julia. We saw her with Rossi Ogawa and William Regal ringside at NXT Stand and Deliver. Reported to be WWE bound, but then announced in the, uh, the inaugural roster for Rossi Ogawa's new promotion, Marigold. So yeah. what have Fightful Select said regarding the, the, the forthcoming weeks and months when it comes to Julia's status? Yeah, because it's a curious one, isn't it? Because she's going to be wrestling for Rossi Ogawa's new promotion, but is also kind of... Her debut with WWE is surely, impen uh, surely like really soon as well. Mm, so, yeah. so they've said uh, Julia is expected to work at least a handful of matches for Marigold before hopefully reporting to the Performance Center in late June or early July. The belief within NXT is that she will have her debut match at NXT Heatwave on July 7th, very specific there, and is expected to be challenging for one of the NXT Women's Championships at the event. Of course, that could mean the main NXT Women's Championship or the newly announced North American Championship as well. Um, Fivel's Corey Brennan also uh, had a few details regarding how Julia could be presented saying that while WWE could obtain the rights to Julia's current theme music, uh, and I don't think they will. I think they'll give us something new personally. Uh, there are currently no plans to do so at this time. Uh, as far as the presentation goes, Brennan has also learned that Julia is currently planned to keep her ring name in WWE. Uh, why mess with that? Yeah, absolutely. She was uh, one of the top stars in stardom uh, and certainly one of the most charismatic as, well, uh, charismatic as well, I think. So if they keep a lot of that the same then maybe just tweak it slightly for an American audience, then I think they're on to a winner. She's very talented. Indeed. A very talented person. We saw first at NXT Stand and Deliver, one of the uh, big shows from WrestleMania week. Jack over here. There he is there. There's his face. Uh, broke down some of the biggest matches of WrestleMania week in an all-new Matches ah, of the Month. Yes. Which you can listen to now on the Coltaholic Wrestling Podcast feed. It was a busy week for wrestling goodness, wasn't it? It was a very busy one. I talk about various matches from Mania, of course, Stand and Deliver, Ring of Honor, many other promotions as well. It's also the pinned tweet on my Twitter currently as well at Jack the Jobber. Easy to find it. And also speaking of that North American title, uh, the video dropped yesterday about the two new titles that WWE have somewhat quietly introduced in amongst all the craziness of WrestleMania. Yeah. So we take a look at what the uh, women's North American title means uh, to WWE as a whole. And we take a look at what the WWE Speed Championship could mm. mean going forward as well. That is on this very channel right now. And for the latest wrestling news throughout the day, you can follow us at Cultaholic on Twitter. Stay safe and love you. Bye.